Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another Science and Spirituality by the Matsada.com teaching ministry. The study for tonight I titled, Worms Help Israeli Scientists Rewrite the Basics of Genetics, a Spiritual Insight. Okay, so I was looking through the, the scientific news, you know, like following the news, and I, I happened upon this article regarding the Israeli sci scientists using these um, these round worms are called nematodes, okay, and that they are part of the phylum nematoda, okay. So they are a a diverse animal phylum, inhabiting a broad range of environments. Nematodes, these round worms, have successfully adapted to nearly every ecosystem on earth from marine salt water to freshwater soils you know um soils from the polar regions to the tropics you know as well as the highest to the lowest ele elevations you know they are present in freshwater mar freshwater lakes you know marine and terrestrial environments where they often outnumber other animals in both individual and species counts and are in are found in locations as diverse as mountains deserts and oceanic trenches you know down at the bottom of the ocean and they're found in every part of the earth's lithosphere now the, the lithosphere is that rigid outer part of the earth consisting of the crust and the upper mantle and they are found at depths even up to 12 thousand feet below the surface of the earth you know in gold mines they, they find these round worms down there in in south africa now they represent 90 percent of all animals on the ocean floor it's interesting right and their numerical dominance often exceeding a million per square meter and accounting for about 80% of all individual animals on Earth. Their diversity of life cycles and their presence at various tropic levels, um, or trophic levels, trophic levels, uh, that's the hierarchical levels in, the, in an ecosystem, point to an important role in many ecosystems. Now, these worms reproduce quickly and their genome contains nearly the same number of genes as the human genome. Tel Aviv University researchers discovered a mechanism in nematodes that allows the nervous system cells to communicate with germ cells. Those cells that contain the information, the genetic and epigenetic that is transmitted to future generations, okay? And the study identifies the way in which neurons transmit messages to future generations. The mechanistic pathway, say researchers, is that it is controlled by small RNA molecules which regulate gene expression. And the study discovered how small RNAs convey information derived from neurons to the progeny and influence a variety of psych physiological processes including the food seeking behavior of the offspring and so the idea is that the the information is being conveyed to future generations is that they will have this taste for a certain type of food you know and so according to the study this is the first time a mechanism has been identified that can transmit neural responses across generations. The discovery may have major implications for understanding hereditary or heredity of a species. And then the researchers, they state that it's important to stress that we don't know yet whether any of these translates to humans. If it does, then studying the mechanism could have a practical use in medicine. Many diseases might have some epigenetically inherited component involving changes in caused by modifi modification of gene expression rather than changes of the genetic code itself. Deeper understanding of non-conventional forms of inheritance could be crucial to better understand these conditions and design better diagnostics and therapeutics. It would be fascinating to see if special neuronal activities could impact the inherited information in a way that would give specific advantages to the progeny through this route. Parents could potentially transmit information that would be beneficial to the progeny in the context of natural selection. It could therefore potentially influence an, organi an organism's evolutionary course. Okay, so that, that's what the, the researchers say. 
the there are, are four papers, four research papers I cited in the blog post. Check that out. And um, you can find further information on this. Now, the spiritual insight that we receive from this type of research is found within the idea of passing on generational traits as we see according to Genesis chapter 17, verse 9. And it says, Hashem further said to Avraham, As for you and your offspring to come throughout the ages shall keep my covenant. Okay? Genesis 17, verse 9. In the Hebrew Bible, we find this phrase, Midor Lador, occurring very frequently. You know, we find it all over the place. It, it means from door to door, meaning from generation to generation. The Hebrew words Dor Lador signifies how the passing of Jewish traditions and teachings from one generation to another has perver- preserved Judaism, the people of Israel, and the traditions from the Bible. Note how this is the function of the command to pass the tradition of holding God's word to a very high standard and communicating this and teaching this to our children, right? Now, this is emphasized in the comments that Haman made. You know, we read the story of, um, during Purim, we read the story in Esther. uh, Haman made particular comments to King Xerxes. In Esther chapter 3, verse 8, he says the following. He says, Then Haman said to King Xerxes, There is a certain people dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom who keep themselves separate. They, their customs are different from those of other people. They do not obey the king's laws. It's not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. Okay? So note how these customs or traditions cause the peoples to separate themselves such that they do not violate the covenant of God by worshiping other gods, right? Now, something similar is being communicating to us with a warning according to Parashat Kitetsi in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 to 19. It says the following. It says, Remember what Amalek did to you by the way when you came forth out of Egypt how he met you by the way and struck at your rear all who were feeble behind you when you were faint and weary and he did not fear God therefore it shall be when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your enemies around in the land which God gives you for an inheritance to possess that you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven you shall not forget okay so when we compare the text from Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16, we find that some details have been left out here in Deuteronomy. In Exodus, we learn that Amalek attacked Israel from the rear, slaughtering the weakest of the members of the community, symbolized by those who were trailing behind the congregation of Israel. And we're also told that Amalek acted with cruelty because he did not fear God. You know, the idea being put forward here is that Amalek taught the world how to be cruel and to attack the nation that had come out of Egypt and was wandering around in the desert. He did not fear the God of Israel who delivered her from the hand of a powerful nation. And this is the way of the world, to terrorize the righteous, to practice cruelty, and to engage in bloodlust and to not fear the God of Israel. And this is the approach of nearly all the governments in the world and is the way of religious cults who refuse the truth of God, the God of Israel, teaching their own spin on the truth. And because of this, the story of Amalek was written in the Torah to cause us to not forget. From generation to generation, door to door, we are to pass on this story of Amalek, who symbolizes all spiritual warfare in the lives of God's people. Remember, as the battle raged on, Moshe would go to the top of the mountain, holding his staff in his hands, up in prayer to the Lord God of Israel um, so that Israel would prevail. And we read that as Moshe's hands grew heavy, Amalek prevailed. And so they propped up his hands so that Israel then would prevail. And so when Moshe's hands became strong, Israel prevailed. The battle, this battle lasted till the end of the day, until sunset, and Amalek was defeated. To commemorate the victory, Moshe then built an altar and called it Adonai Nisi. You know, the um, the Lord is my miracle, right? And 
He said, hand upon the throne of the Lord. The Lord will make war with Amalek from generation to generation, according to Exodus chapter 17, verse 16. Now, the analogy here is Moshe was stretching out his hands upon the throne of God in order to gain victory in the battle against the spiritual forces that come against the people of God. The Lord God himself commands us in the Torah to zahor, to remember the Shabbat, to keep it holy, Exodus 20, verse 8. To zahor, to remember the redemption of the Passover, Exodus 13, verse 3. Right, And to Zahor, to remember what God did to Miriam because of Lashon Hara, you know, evil speech that's connected to Hamotzira, that wellspring of evil that comes from within. Right, Deuteronomy 24, verse 9. This, um, in a similar manner, we are commanded to Zahor, to remember Amalek, what, they did, what Amalek did to Israel. In order to fulfill this commandment, to remember Jewish tradition, publicly recites this verse on the Shabbat prior to Purim called Shabbat Zahor, the Sabbath of remembering, right? And so that the wiping out of Amalek might be connected with the wiping out of Haman, Haman the Agite. And remember that Haman was a descendant of Amalek, according to Esther chapter 3, verse 1, and the connection here to both spiritual and physical warfare. Now, in the Hebrew words, dor la dor, we are, to remi- we are reminded how the Torah describes Amalek as something more than simply a uh, particularly wicked people who attack the children of Israel. No, Amalek symbolizes the collective children of darkness, the servants of the evil one. These are the types of people that make up this world. Historically, Amalek may have been a grandson of Esau and chief of an Edomite tribe. According to, um, like, see Genesis 36, verse 12 and 36, verse 16. And he is also described as the first among the nations, right? And even predating the time of Abraham, according to Genesis 14, verse 7 and Numbers 24, verse 20. Now, Augustine describes Amalek as the city of the world where Israel represented the city of God. And so this historical perspective leads us to understand how Amalek represents the children of darkness, that he teaches his children to do wickedly, as opposed to the children of God who teach teach their children to do act righteously. Now the Lord God used Amalek to attack Israel because during this time the people doubted the Lord by asking whether the Lord was among them, you know, in Exodus 17. You know, how often do we doubt God, whether he is among us today? You know, what do you think? Now, the idea of wiping out Amalek is representative of the spiritual warfare that we are all a part of. And the weapons of our warfare is the truth of God, the salvation of his son, Yeshua the Messiah, in our lives. And the word of God, according to the Bible. You know, Paul wrote that we are to cast off the works of darkness and to wrap ourselves with the armor of light, which is righteousness. Romans 13, verse 12. And like what we read in the scientific research on the transmission of genetic traits for food-seeking behaviors of future generations, we too are to teach our children and those around us to seek the life-giving waters of God in his Messiah Yeshua and then the food that he provides in his living word in the Bible, right? That are found in the, the word of God that is found in the scriptures. And this will cause future generations, door la door, right? To know, to not act like Amalek and but to walk in righteousness as we are called to emuna to faith with the ayin hatova the good eye of trusting in the god of israel and this is why we are called the children of light yom b'nei haor who walk in the light according to the scriptures okay so the idea here that we can take from this scientific research is that um there's a fascinating amount of research in the sense that they have, the scientists, the Tel Aviv scientists, have learned that there's a mechanism for the transmittance of this, uh, the kind of food that would be tasty. You know, the passing on from generation to generation, the kind of food that we like, you know, that, would, that, that these roundworms love to eat. And the, the spiritual insights that we receive is the importance of our teaching our children 
the significance of, of knowing God, of knowing his Messiah, and of studying his word. This is the, the spiritual food that we need to live according to the way that God wants us to live. You know, what a glorious thing it is. And it is a fantastic thing to be able to take and look at the scientific research and to be able to, to see these things and the, the significance of God's word for our lives. You know, I, that, I think that's just fantastic. So um, that was a study that I had for tonight. If you enjoyed the study, like the, the, the video, subscribe to the channel. You can leave a comment on the YouTube channel or um, you can send me an email if you want to talk about these things. I love to talk about these things. Um, and so you can find my email on the website, matsadi.com. So thanks for listening. Goodbye.